What is up guys, today we're going to be doing a kind of fun comparison that no one really asked for but I thought it was really fun to do the LG V60 versus the iPhone SE 2020. So I've been really pleased with both of these phones. Um, I've been playing with this one for a kind of a short time but been really pleased with it. The V60 in my opinion is really uh, in runner up for really the best phone uh, of the year really. It is really nice and I can't wait to get my dual screen case. So we're just doing the phones or this one alone uh, by itself today. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. So you have a $600 to $700 phone uh, depending on whether you get the dual screen case is going to be that extra 100 bucks. The iPhone SE is a mid-ranger but this phone has been praised because it's got a flagship chip in it, um, the Apple A13 chip and also it's got a really really great camera but um, that's pretty interesting so I'm going to compare, I really want to compare the two cameras together so you guys can see uh, kind of the difference between like a flagship and just the little stuff that a flagship camera will do. Alright, so starting off with the body of each phone, as you can see here, uh, just a massive difference. Look at this in size. It is uh, The SE is like a dwarf compared to, it's like a little baby phone compared to the LG V60. Now, the V60 is abnormally big, uh, even for most flagships. So, if you take, for instance, like... You know, the V50 is still kind of small compared to the V60. Uh, really, any phone is going to look really small compared to the V60. Um, so, as you can see, hardware-wise, both glass and metal phones, they both look really great. Uh, the V60, the more modern-looking phone, uh, to me, definitely, because of the multiple cameras on here. Uh, you just have the one single camera on here. It just kind of makes it look just a slightly dated. Not super dated, but slightly dated. And uh, definitely a big weight difference here. Uh, the V6 is going to be just massively, you know, uh, not super heavy, but it's going to be heavy compared to the SE. And also you have your volume rockers, uh, your mute switch on the SE, your Google Assistant button on the V60, power buttons on the right side. Also have a headphone jack on the V60 with the quad deck. And on the SE, you just have no headphone jack. You do have stereo speakers on both of these guys. Uh, USB Type-C, Apple's uh, charging port. And uh, that's pretty much it for the body. So uh, definitely I think the V60 is the better looking phone here, right? Um, but it just depends on taste. Uh, definitely from the front, it's no debate. Uh, the SE just looks super old with these huge bezels uh, right here, which is kind of strange that Apple still went with this design, but a lot of Apple fans don't really mind it, so it's not really a big deal. But as you can see, it is starting to show its age here in 2020. Um, just with these huge bezels. Now you do have Face ID um, on, or what? Uh, you do have the Touch ID on the SE, as you can see works very fast extremely fast but um, you have the more up-to-date in display fingerprint scanner on the V60 and I don't know how you guys feel about it but I think it's definitely cooler to have that in display fingerprint sensor um, on here and it's just as fast as the touch ID as you can see so it's not it's not like it's slow by any means. So if you can do a in-display fingerprint sensor right, I think it pays off because, again, it's just cooler to me. I do have these specs uh, on here because people have been saying that they want to see them. So I will show you guys uh, the specs on GSM Arena just so you can see so we can walk through them, compare them. Uh, so, again, both these phones have an IP rating, IP68, IP67, dust and water resistant. You can get both of these phones wet, uh, no problem. So let's talk about the display. So you have a POLED 6.8 inch 1080p panel 395 for the PPI on the V60. On the SE2020 you have an IPS display, a 4.7 inch display. So huge difference. If you're in a compact phones, you're going to love this phone. If you're not, you know, obviously you're going to hate it. Uh, but 720p plus 326 for the PPI. Honestly, um, the display is still fine on the SE2020. Um, as you can see, it's still fairly bright. It gets just as bright as the V60. Um, so I have no real complaints with uh, this guy outdoors. I, if you just prefer, you know, just watching content on a bigger display, uh, this is going to be the more immersive. Now, one of the things you will notice is that colors are just going to be way more vibrant and it's just going to be more pleasing to the eye on the V60 as opposed to the iPhone. Plus, you do have the uh, water drop notch in the thinner bezels which is giving it a more immersive experience and on the iPhone like I said you just have these huge bezels uh, so that is one thing uh, I did notice just a huge difference when it comes to media content 
Now both of these phones have stereo speakers on here so let's go ahead and check them out. So beautiful, loud, uh, crystal clear speakers, very good depth uh, with the bass. Uh, mids and highs are great. No, uh, you know, ringing sound at max volume, no distortion or anything like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out the iPhone. So as you would expect, uh, the V60 just has the overall louder and better speaker. The iPhone actually kind of distorts at uh, max volume a little bit, especially with those really high strings. So it just uh, can't handle it. It's just because the V60 just has bigger speakers because it's a bigger phone. But I actually really like the SE speakers for its size. I think they actually sound uh, pretty good. It still has a lot of bass to it. So uh, very good on the SE. Now let's go ahead and touch on software real quick. So you have iOS 13.7 I believe and you have Android 10. Uh, this will be in Android 11 of course. Um, but if you're not completely sold on iOS, uh, there's a lot of stuff with Android. A lot of customization stuff you can do. You can really make the phone your own. But iOS has some great advantages on its own even though it's not super customizable. You do have the FaceTime application which I really love. iMessage is one of the best messaging applications. Um, but a lot of stuff like the Google services, the Google Now is just a must have. I absolutely love it. And again, if you're into just customizing, changing icons and stuff like that, that is the big difference. As far as applications, you're going to have the same amount of applications on here and they're both uh, relatively smooth. So let's go ahead and talk about that actually. So on the iPhone you have the Apple A13 chip and on the LG V60 you have the Snapdragon 865 with the Adreno 650 GPU, micro SD support on the V60, 128 gigs of storage and you have 8 gigs of RAM on here. And on the iPhone you do not have expandable storage, 64 gigs of internal storage and 3 gigs of RAM but don't let that fool you multitasking and stuff like that is perfectly fine on the iPhone even though it has such low RAM so let's go ahead and run a quick little speed test here let's go ahead and open YouTube as you can see look at the iPhone just keeps up that chip is no joke iPhone I think it got it there yep sure did I think Instagram is just more opt well, uh, better optimized on iOS to me. I've always felt like that. Again. Jeez. Gosh. <laughs> Let me turn it down. The speaker difference. <laughs> but as you can see, the iPhone got it there just very fast it's crazy fast the a13 chip i've always been impressed with that let's try the both the uh, app stores it's like the v60 got it there let's try the voice assistance here tell me a fun fact that may be beyond my abilities at the moment oh she can't do that okay that's only a google thing i guess What are the NBA standings? Here are the standings for the NBA from the current season. OpenLG.com. I found this on the web page. No. Does the iPhone not? Uh, yeah, usually. Oh, I can't do that command like that. Hmm. Well, as you can see, again, both phones are very, very fast. Um, so no issues here. As you can see, the iPhone just blazing fast here. Uh, it's really crazy. Now let's take a look at some gaming here. Um, so let's check out the graphics. Where is it? This is a completely different UI on iOS. Graphics. Graphics. As you can see, HDR, Extreme. We can do UDHD, we have to download Senate Pack. So as you can see, very nice high graphics on both. Uh, we're not gonna do that just to save time here. 
And uh, as you can see, let's go ahead and try to get into a game. Anyway, um, yeah, so gaming experience is going to be great on both. It's going to be really nice. Um, again, it depends on how you, you know, want to play. I like small phones, especially for certain games. Uh, but for certain games, again, you want a bigger phone. Uh, like Call of Duty Mobile, uh, you're going to want a bigger phone, right? Um, but for games like this that, you know, it's just more comfortable if you have smaller hands. But if you're a serious gamer, I think most people really want a huge phone uh, but as you can see excellent on both let me turn this guy down excellent on both so it is just a really enjoyable experience uh, playing games on both of these phones and the LG V60 having that dual screen case is going to be really really big for gaming because you can use it as pretty much like a little touch screen controller almost like a Nintendo DS and so that is really cool uh, to have if you want to get that case uh, with it so that is going to make it a really you know ultimate gaming experience now we opened quite a few applications let's check out the multitasking on both of these so we should be still open on the browser right PUBG we just got out of let's just bounce back into it see boom we're right back in it just to show you guys how well I think the iPhone does Subway Surfer should still be open. We're still open on both. Check out both Play Stores are open or App Stores. Instagram still open. So as you can see, both phones are doing very well now. I do think the V60 will definitely come out on top if I really you know press it for a bunch of applications and just keep going if you're you know really hardcore multitasker um, then I think the 8 gigs of RAM is going to be more than enough on the V60 but as you can see great on both phones alright let's check out these specs on the camera so you have a 64 megapixel standard and a 13 megapixel ultra wide on the V60.3 depth sensor AK video which is crazy uh, you also have a selfie camera at 10 megapixels that is 4k and on the iPhone you have a just a standard 12 megapixel 4k video 7 megapixel selfie camera on here uh, so just checking out the photos as you can see they both take really great photos uh, but what I do notice is that I really prefer the more natural looking colors on the V60 I just think it just looks better uh, to me and now the V60 does do a better job at balancing the white balance as you can see with this Funko Pop uh, it definitely the SE kind of struggles uh, there and you definitely see that problem uh, with the front facing camera now the front facing camera is very good on the SE it's just I'm in a condition where the lights are really harsh I have harsh lights hitting me as you can see the V60 handled it like a ball same picture and uh, as you can see the white balance is just really off uh, on the SE uh, so that is one of the things I've noticed but uh, both really great cameras. I have no complaints. I actually think the video is much better as well on the SE, uh, which is really great. So, so for cameras, I do think the iPhone SE is really good, but I still would go with the V60 uh, here, just having uh, more sensors, the ultra wide, the depth sensor, and also having a night mode on the V60. Uh, you do not have that on the SE here. And uh, yeah, so the video on here is really solid on the SE. That is something I have to uh, give compliments to. Uh, but overall, for camera quality, I uh, definitely, definitely uh, would grab the V60 over the SE here. Now, let's go ahead and talk about battery life. So on the iPhone, you have a pretty small battery life, a 1,821 milliamp battery, 18-watt uh, fast charging. You also get wireless charging uh, on the iPhone as well, which is really great because a lot of mid-rangers do not have wireless charging. Uh, on the V60, you have a 5,000 milliamp battery also with wireless charging uh, as well. Um, so definitely if you're not on 5G now, that it depends. If you're not on 5G and you don't have the dual screen case, you can easily squeeze around 10 to 11 hours of screen on time on the V60, which is absolutely nuts. 
the iPhone you can definitely get through the day but this is not a phone you can do a day and a half at the end of the day you 100% gonna be charging this phone uh, but it does have very good battery life to get you through uh, the day if you want a phone that's gonna get you some days uh, then the V60 is just gonna crush it again depending on if you're on 5g and it depends if you have that dual screen case now these are two excellent phones I thought it was a pretty fun comparison so what do you guys think be sure to let me know and I will catch you guys in the next one.